Hi again. So the next step is putting in some wet dry faders to this patch. But the first thing I need to do is to tidy it up a bit. Um, I'm just going to fast forward through that, but basically I'm just going to use panel objects to divide up the different sections of this patch um, to make it look a bit nicer on the screen so we don't get lost later on. So how do you make a wet dry fader in Max? Um, I'll just build a little example here using some oscillators as sound sources. And so basically what we want to be able to do is to multiply the amplitude of um, of them both in a kind of opposite way. So let's use a, a dial object as the control. We need to set some of the parameters for that dial object in the inspector. Um, if we float the output and then set the number of uh, the range to one, then if we just attach a floating point number box to it, we can see that it's going between naught and one. Um, and so that can uh, control the amplitude of one of our inputs. And then basically we want one minus that number, which will just, both of those numbers will now add up to one. When one's on naught, the other one's on one and vice versa. And so um, that would work, but it won't sound very nice. Um, and if I just connect this up to a gain control and an easy DAC, you'll see what it does sound like. So that's one of the oscillators coming through on its own. And that's the other one. Um, but you can hear that there's a kind of click. So we can't just connect those um, those numbers directly to the amplitude. Um, basically, we need to smooth out the transitions between numbers. And we can do that using a line tilde. And if we send it a message using a dollar one argument followed by 50, meaning 50 milliseconds, then whenever that dial is changing value, it will just do it smoothly over a period of 50 milliseconds. Um, we can remove these boxes now. And so this should now work, but smoothly. Okay. So that is um, is a wet dry fader, effectively. Um, in order to be able to actually reuse that in um, future patches, we can just select all of the machinery there and encapsulate it. And title the sub patcher wet dry and copy it over to our main patch. So in um, this B patcher, the point where we want to actually implement a wet dry fader would be in these sub patches, which are controlling the envelopes. So just to um, remind you the audio is coming into the B patcher through this input. It's then being multiplied by an envelope um, and it's then being output from the bottom of the B patcher. Um, so that's effectively the wet signal. Um, if we created 
a um, patch cord just connecting the input to the output, that would be a dry signal. And so fading between those two would work as a wet dry um, function. And because we're going to want to include this dial in the uh, presentation mode so that we can actually see it and control it, it'll be better to um, control that from outside the patch. So we can create another um, input for this sub patcher. Cut that dial instead of deleting it, and then I can paste it out here. So you see that another input appeared on that sub patcher as a result of me creating this second inlet. So I now just need to do that for all five of these um, sub patches, which are controlling the envelopes for the five streams of audio. And then we will have five wet dry mixers. Um, faders, it would perhaps be good to be able to control all five at once as well. Um, so what we can do is we can create a receive object call it master mix and somewhere else we're in the patch can create a, another one of these dials and just send it over to the to all of the other wet dry faders that we're going to create so I will um, do all five of those now okay so those are all done and now we just need to put them into presentation mode in order to be able in order to be able to control the patch while we're using it. Well done. In the next video, I'll set up a preset system for this patch.